Ukwe in Nigeria. Yeah. What should we, already we're on the edge, as even just yeah. by seeing, what should we expect from your presentation? Well, I mean, these are challenging times in the life of our nation. In the past one year, we have witnessed a lot of agitations, some tending towards violence. But I believe at the end of the day, we still need to sit down and, and uh, accept the fact that we are better and greater together as a nation. I want to look at some of the challenges that we have and the prospects for us as a nation. That's basically the, the reason for my topic, and I, I, be, I, I hope I'll be able to do justice to we are, we are what sure, I to We are do. sure that you do justice. But on a final note, for leaders and for all of us as Nigerians, what do you think are things that we need to begin to do now? That's the kind of thing I would say. Okay. <laughs> Don't say it now. It is solely for the presentation. Yeah. That's, that's, what, that's what I want to do with my presentation. Fantastic, sir. So Thank we would look forward Thank to you your presentation. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Adini. Thank you. We'll go on another break now, and the platform will be right back. started, we would be uh, led in the rendition of the national anthem by Ige. Let's put our hands together even as we receive Ige. May we rise for the national anthem.
Thank you very much. You may be seated. No people on earth can attain the potential unless they confront the challenges that face them and are able to articulate their identity and their, their purpose. To kick off the conversation of this morning, which is a Nigerian jigsaw, I'd like to invite the convener of the platform and the senior pastor of the Covenant Christian Center, Boju Oyemade. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Very much. All right. You know, I used to be a very shy person <laughs> until the Holy Ghost came on me. All right then. All right. I will start a discussion this um, morning uh, very briefly, just to. Um, introduce the platform and then we'll turn the stage over to uh, guest speakers and I personally believe this will be the most uh, effective edition of the platform we've had so far. Now what I have here, um, I could have called it building institutions of persuasion, I could have called it persuasion versus force, or I could say that the democratic system of government cannot really work without faith. And when I talk about faith, is that those who designed what we call our democratic system of government that we practice today, all right, in Nigeria, took it for granted that there will be some morality because of, all right, what was going on in their own nations and at that particular point in time. And that sense of morality, integrity, and honesty came as a result of the relig religious organizations and the faith that was in operation within their society at that particular point in time. And I'll start out by saying this, that civilization has been defined as the maintenance of social order. It has been said that the triumph of persuasion over force is the sign, really, of a civilized society. That the recourse to force, however unavoidable, is a disclosure of the failure of civilization, either in the general society or in the remnant of individuals. Professor Whitehead said, now the intercourse between individuals and between social groups takes one of the two forms, force or persuasion. Commerce is the great example of the intercourse by way of persuasion, war, slavery, and governmental compulsion exemplify the reign of force. Now what this simply means is that the more civilized people are, the less need the existence of an outward authority to compel them to do the right thing. Their mode of behavior stems from their inner persuasions. A small, still voice within them that tells them this is right or this is wrong, don't do it. This is what is termed as the culture of a people. And this is what they are taught within what we call the institutions of persuasion. Information and training that regulates outward behavior. These institutions are first the family, then schools, relig religious organizations, and uh, the media, which are responsible for building culture, instilling modes of behavior, education, not just schooling, enlightenment, and not just indoctrination. Now, I once personally observed this in a country.